Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala. Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Thursday morning. Are you worried about diabetes? Diabetes is a, a scary word. I mean, you hear about people dying from it. It's not just about getting, you know, sleepy in the afternoon. It's it's it's, it's a serious, serious condition uh, or disease is the, the better word. Uh, in in the studio is Brittany Marthaler. Brittany brings us some awesome guests, and she's doing it again today. Brittany is the communications manager at Ocala Health, and today she has brought uh, Amy Freeman, who's a nutritionist. Is that what I was going to say? Okay. And then Dr. Nabil Messiah. He is the primary care provider with family care specialists uh, and Amy is actually with Ocala Health. She's a certified diabetes educator as well. So in the course of this interview, if you have any questions, you are invited to call in to ask. Um, we're going to find out about diabetes and how to tell if you're pre-diabetic. Kind of, uh, I, I guess, maybe a wake-up call. Hopefully that we can uh, we can not become diabetic after we find out if we're pre. So good morning to all three of you. Thank you for coming here today. Thank you for bringing us some great guests, Brittany. Thank you for as always, um, I don't know. I can't hear you. There, yeah, now I got you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let, let me start with Dr. Nabil. You have an awesome accent. Are you originally from? I'm originally Egyptian. Was Egyptian. Born in, uh, Isn't Cairo, that cool? Egypt. I always wanted to go to Egypt. Do you li- do you live here now? I've been in the United States since 1985. 1985. About 32, 33 Do you miss the pyramids? See, I would miss the pyramids. <laughs> I, do, I do miss uh, visiting uh, Egypt. It's, it's one of the good countries you can enjoy something completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I finished uh, medical school 82 in Cairo. And, uh, oh, was that right? I, it was a good life. I enjoyed it, and uh, one, it's a nice place to visit. One day the world will be peaceful again, and we'll be able to go anywhere, right? Hopefully. I'm all hopefully. Place. So let's talk about diabetes. Um, pre-diabetes. It's a scary thing to think yeah. that you may be. Is there? Is there? We usually associate diabetes. The lay person does. Maybe not you guys, but we usually associate it with obesity. I, is I, it necessary? Could it be a skinny person with diabetes? Exactly. Exactly. Diabetes is is a, one of the diseases which is becoming more and more prevalent every day, and, uh, and what, why it's is that? one is. Uh, it's just uh, one thing is this change in lifestyle. 30 years ago or 40 years ago or 50 years ago, we were more uh, active, more, uh, we spent more time moving around. Right now, uh, the lifestyle or the westernized lifestyle is a little bit more sedentary from the house. The house is comfortable, the car. Mm-hmm. We don't have any public transportation, most cities. And uh, the amount of calories we consume every day is a little bit more than before. So and the portion size is more so. Obesity issue is a problem and uh, it predisposes the and more people to diabetes. And educate me a little bit on this. This is specifically diabetes type 2? Um, diabetes type 2, yeah, most of the patients are uh, tend to be obese. But uh, in type 1, uh, they tend to be thin really? and younger in age. Yeah. Really? So uh, most of the time, diagnosed type uh, di- diabetes type 1 was the, is diagnosed uh, at young age, when in a juvenile age. But uh, sometimes it can happen in an adult too, but rare. But most of the time, the type 2 are diagnosed in adults, and they tend to be obese. So is it fair to say that type 2 diabetes is very preventable? It is in comparison to 30, 40, 50 years ago, when I, uh, I started medical school a long time ago, four years ago, the treatment now is extremely, extremely easy and uh, management is a lot easier than before. Yeah. So it is one of the medical condition we can treat very well these days. So uh, uh, does that mean that maybe you don't need shots as often as before? Can you take a pill? <laughs> One, one thing I have to, if, if that is all what I can leave today, is the point I'm going to mention. The word shots for diabetes is not the same as what everybody think it is. Oh, really? Uh, in 30, 40 years ago, the shot was a nightmare. And everybody mm-hmm. think that if you have to go to insulin, this is a nightmare. Right now, due to the advancement in technology, you can hardly feel the needle. The, 
hypodermic needle for diabetes or any other conditions is so tiny, you barely feel it. So if anything I would like to emphasize today is for people to understand that if their physician told them I we have to start insulin or any other injectable anti-diabetic medication, I don't want them to be afraid at all. I am myself became diabetic three, four years ago, and I, I take insulin every oh, day. Oh, really? So it's, it's, it's extremely easy. It doesn't cause any, any discomfort like in the past, but still the stigma present mm-hmm. between people. So does the, uh, the, the nutrition part, going to Amy's part of this conversation, does that play a role in somebody who's already diagnosed as diabetes? Like, does it help at all? Or is, this, is, is the nutritional information to prevent us from getting diabetes? That's a very good question, and that's a very loaded question. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. From a nutrition point of view, and as a dietitian, nutrition is important for any health condition, not just diabetes. Okay. It tends to kind of raise up with diabetes because that's what most folks associate diseases with, is diabetes and, and nutrition. Oh, I can't eat right. carbs because now I have diabetes. Right. Um, but the way that we eat can help to decrease our risk of not just diabetes, but prediabetes. It can also be used during the treatment therapy of diabetes. And so lifelong, yeah. we want to pay attention to nutrition. So let me, let me use the interstate as a metaphor. Okay. <laughs> if I'm on the entrance ramp, I'm not on the interstate yet, but the rules say I can't turn around. Right. Is that what prediabetes is? You're on your way, and I'm sorry, you're going to get there, you can't turn around? Actually, um, there were four pretty landmark studies done on delaying or preventing type 2 diabetes. So this is type 2 diabetes. Okay. Um, Those studies, baseline, bottom line, if you boiled it all down, pointed to the fact that our lifestyle definitely plays a role in type 2 diabetes. And so if we have a healthy lifestyle, To tease that out a little bit, if we're exercising about 30 minutes most days of the week and we have a well-balanced diet, not only can that prevent diabetes, but it can also bring pre-diabetes back to that normal state. I was waiting for that word reverse, but you didn't use it. I'm not going to use reverse. Um, I like (laughs) to say put to kind of in remission. Because again, if oh, you okay, if you okay. neglect that healthy lifestyle and you go back to um, not being active and not eating healthy, right. guess what? Yeah, those blood sugars are going to creep back up again. So I don't like to say reverse because right. that would at least if someone told me that that would give me a false sense of security. Okay, I I, I like her answer and I completely agree with it. The principal problem people become pre-diabetic or diabetic is either resistance to insulin or not enough insulin to digest the carbohydrate and sugars. So the first thing we do when somebody is pre-diabetic is to put them on a strict diabetic diet because the amount of insulin either not enough or not working as it should. So if they took less, less carbohydrate and sugar, it can the, the blood glucose level can be normal again. And mm-hmm. that's why the first thing we do, not medication, but dietary restriction and behavioral modification. How do you uh, convince a person that they need to do this kind of uh, dietary restriction and get on a good nutrition plan? Because sometimes people will drink, they'll smoke, and then you'll notice you know, they're not eating well, and then you as a physician or a nutritionist will tell them they need to cut back or stop, and yet they won't listen. First of all, it's not my place as a dietitian to tell someone they have to do something. Oh, I think that would, again, if I go back to someone telling me that, Mm -hmm. that would put me on the defensive. So if someone was sent to me by their physician for diabetes education regarding meal planning, I would like to see what they're doing now and ask them, well, what things can you change to either improve your blood sugars or maybe to improve weight or a lot of folks if they have diabetes now their main concern is I don't want to take more medication Mm -hmm. so wherever they're at 
in their thought process because most of us know basically what a healthy diet is. We might not know how to get there. And so I just like to take it where the person's at, what they're willing to do, and move forward. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a little break, and when we come back, I want to scare the listeners. <laughs> I, I want you to tell us how we can tell if we are pre-diabetic, okay? I, I think there are some things. And, and it might save some listeners, too, right? It might save us. So we'll, ta- we'll take a little break and be right back. 91 to 95. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. The Coke Zero 400. It's where American pride meets NASCAR history. This year, you can catch a glimpse of NASCAR history yet to come with the all-new seats and all-new views of Daytona Rising. And be sure to stick around for one of the Southeast's largest firework shows after the race. Kids 12 and under are $10 for the Coke Zero 400, powered by Coca-Cola, Sunday night, July 5th. New seats are selling fast. Guarantee yours now at 1-800-PIT-SHOP or DaytonaInternationalSpeedway.com. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy. Never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results. And all but given up on my sex life. Then, I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow! They made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor. So much more energy. And no longer worry about my performance. New Mail treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep and neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara, and me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA The Source. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, Yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we we do that. I need my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new truck. Yep, we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. All right, 18 minutes. Thank you. 18 minutes after 11 o'clock. All right, this is a real serious topic. And how many people don't relate to this whole fear of diabetes? Because as the doctor was saying, we we are sedentary. I I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, I've often wondered about this myself. And uh, I've been trying to eat healthier. And and, uh, I don't know that I'm quite doing it, but uh, I've been trying. Dr. Nabil Messiah is in the studio. He's the primary care provider with family care specialists. And Amy Freeman is here. She's the certified diabetes expert educator with Ocala Health, and of course, Brittany Rothaller is the lady we thank for inviting our two guests today over at Ocala Health, and uh, we'll we'll get addresses and phone numbers, websites, et cetera, in a bit, but I want to scare myself. I want you to scare me. Tell me what I need to be looking for within myself, and so everybody else can be left out of being scared. So don't listen. No, I'm teasing. No, wh- how, how do we know? How do we know that we're pre do, Or do we know? Is this something we have to have a doctor tell us? Uh, It's very easy now to diagnose diabetes. The first thing we do is a blood test. Uh, We ask the patient to come fasting one day and we measure his uh, blood glucose level. If it is less than 100, that means uh, his pancreas and insulin level are normal. If it is a little between 100 to 126, uh, there is some uh, impairment in the glucose digestion and we uh, either go to dietary restrictions for behavior and behavior modification for a few months or we send him to do another test uh, to uh, confirm or to test more the amount of insulin and the glucose digestion ability. If the level between 126 or more than 26 to 200, uh, it is uh, considered uh, glucose intolerance and he is pre-diabetic and we do something called two-hour glucose tolerance test. 
uh, they give the patient 75 milligram uh, glucose and they measure his blood sugar in an hour and two hours and depend on that result. We either can give him diagnosis of diabetes mellitus type 2 or uh, pre-diabetic. Oh, wow. It's, uh, but uh, it's not a difficult uh, task at all to and, diagnose and, and it. And all of those levels that you just named, those are all possibly where we can say, well, except for the first one where we're fine, the, the remission can actually happen? We can go into remission? If we, if we would behave, if we run and jump and eat. Well, you don't right. even have to run. No? Yeah. Just, just yeah. move around? It just might be 30 minutes of moderate walking. Uh-huh. That, that, that will also suffice. And to add on, um, some of the hallmark signs of diabetes, which might bring a person hopefully to go to their physician, yeah. is uh, increased thirst, frequent urination, impaired wound healing but the first two on that I mentioned those are usually the ones that for a while people try and rationalize well I live in Florida it's hot I drink a lot so I urinate a lot or go to the bathroom a lot Mm -hmm. but if that's you and people are making comments boy you drink a lot or you just went to the bathroom see your physician because at that point so much can be done. So much can be done. Wow, wow. Uh, if you put the headsets on, you'll be able to hear the phone call. Uh, just let me give you a chance. We have somebody calling in. So can you hear me? Mm-hmm. If you can, then you'll be able to hear the caller. Good morning. Thank you for calling and for waiting. You're on the air now. Yes, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, if one or both of your parents are diabetic, what are the chances of their offspring uh, coming down with diabetes? Uh, usually, if uh, one of the parents have type 1, the chance is about 50% or less. Type 2, there is a higher chance that uh, the offspring can have diabetes. Does, does bruising have anything to do with uh, having diabetes, uh, usually bruising? Uh, it can, but uh, not the most common uh, thing to notice. It might be attributed to other factors. It might be your wife. She might be angry at you. <laughs> you, might, you might be taking aspirin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you. So my dad, uh, toward the end of his life, he never had diabetes. Toward the end of his life, he was, in, in, he was bed bound. All of a sudden, he became diabetic. And we had to give him the, uh, what do you call them, the insulin, insulin shots. Shot. Is that, I mean, is that because he was sedentary all of a sudden? It was the last six months of his life. The lifestyle is a major contributor to make diabetes surface and produce symptoms. And really? Abnormal blood glucose. And, but there is some genes as well. If he has some genetic factor, just waiting until the right circumstances. And that was when it. When you become more sedentary, eat more and things like that will surface. I'm going to take more walks. Me too. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> We're scaring you? <laughs> we got to take more walks, eat more lettuce. And, and, and how, how, how important is staying away from certain foods? I mean, we've, we've always heard that sugar is bad. Don't, candy bars are no good, right? Well, nutritionally, they're, they're pretty bankrupt. But I would say we don't want to isolate certain foods. I like to look at the whole pattern and to, to make it real easy, and I'll, I'll just give away everything right now. You take your plate, divide it in half. Half that plate is vegetables. Then that other half that's left over, right. a quarter of that is a protein source, like chicken, fish, okay. red meat. Okay. Um, and then that part that's left over, that last quarter, yeah. that's where we put our so-called starchy food or oh, carbohydrate mac food. and cheese is okay. Right. But okay. again, it's a quarter of your plate <laughs> as mac and cheese. That's yeah. not much. Yeah. It's not like we're 16 and we can eat the whole plate anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So that to me is such an easy concept to grasp because no matter if you're at the Golden Corral or you're at the church picnic or if you're at home, you can take that little mental picture of that plate with you. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that uh, observation you have about age is very important because when you're young, like before you hit like 24, it it seems like you're not, you know, you're very thin all the time. You got all this energy. You eat a lot, but after that, your body changes. The metabolism yeah. have to adjust. <laughs> yeah. It does slow down, mm-hmm. and uh, we have to be more careful the older we get. So do you do you give classes, Amy? Do you do you actually invite yeah. people to? Where do you have them? Where do you hold them? The classes are at the Senior Wellness Community Center. It's part of Ocala Health, and we need some requirements. So first off, you have to have a doctor or a nurse practitioner. Do you know one we could recommend? I I do. (laughs) Um, We have to have that referral from your health care provider. Okay. that that's kind of a, a nice little protection because it allows me as a clinician to report back to 
a physician who's watching you, who's monitoring you. And plus, it gives the, the patient or the person being referred that added confidence that the physician is sending you to someone who they trust and who they know will, will help you. Okay, and Dr. Messiah, are you, I mean, is this your specialty? I mean, no, no, I'm no. in uh, family practice. With, oh, okay, uh, okay. With uh, 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 family care specialist. Okay. Uh, no, we see everybody. Just diabetes is one part of one, uh, one of hundreds of Diabetes is disease. bad enough by itself, but does it lead to other things as well? Of course. Oh, it if, does? Uh, if uh, the patient do not take care of himself and doesn't follow the uh, education we give him to improve his health condition or he doesn't take his medication uh, there is uh, a lot of complication diabetes really is not a single disease it's a group of diseases because oh, really? of the complication if if you don't follow a uh, good uh, treatment regime and take care of yourself uh, it can affect the heart the kidney the brain the eyes and have very devastating effect we don't see this effects as bad as in the past because we have wonderful treatment now and we have uh, dietitians and ed uh, yeah. uh, diabetes educator so it is a lot less than before but it's if it happened it's very serious and detrimental and the death rate in diabetics is uh, is higher than the death rate in general population and so if if a person can can come to you for their physical say they need an, an annual checkup whether you're male or female do you give them the test then to see if they're diabetic? Yeah, first of all is the symptoms. We see if uh -huh. you have any symptoms or not. And uh, the routine blood test is very simple to be done, and we detect them. Mm -hmm. Depend on how high is their blood glucose, we decide the next step in treatment. If it is uh, not, hu not very high, the blood glucose level, we refer to behavior modification okay. and things. But after a certain level, we have to start medication immediately. Uh, because wouldn't it but wouldn't that be the best doctor's visit if, if I went in and, I, and you said you got a problem and all you got to do is change your behavior? I mean, that, I mean oh, wow, nothing it has is. to get cut off. It is. No, <laughs> I, I, don't, right? I don't need any medicine. I just got to take a walk and eat, bro. Right? right? No, I right, think you're exactly. right and 100% correct. And it happened in a lot of patients who are motivated. And the patients who are not motivated, we refer them for nutritional counseling or yeah. uh, difficult one who doesn't want to deal or have some uh, psychological issue. We refer them to psychologists to see what is the issue for the denial to take care to better care of themselves but it, it does work very well the diet and exercise do, does do a lot of wonders i love that i love that with this particular exactly. you, you know us guys we're can, uh, often accused of not paying attention to our health right <laughs> you're smiling because you're yeah, great just right? maybe a little so, okay <laughs> so let's say there's a lady listening we got a lot of lady listeners and her husband says, I don't like that talk show stuff. <laughs> so he's not listening. <laughs> so they can share this video or they can come to one of your classes. And we also have a support group as well for folks who are maybe intimidated by a class. The diabetes support group, it's much more laid back. It's, um, it's a support group. You come in and, and maybe you have an issue. Well, the person sitting next to you might have just gone through that issue and said, you know what? It's not as bad as that. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I did, and I'll tell you how it happened. And for a lot of folks, just that calming from That's somebody it, who's yeah. in the same boat Somebody who a lot. can speak your language. Do, do yeah. you charge for the classes? For the support group, it is free and it is open to the public. Okay. The classes, on the other hand, that goes through health care insurance. Oh, okay. So, so health care insurance covers it. And if they don't, then we call you and let you know if you have a copay or co-insurance, and then you decide what you'd like to do. Okay. Uh, we got about a minute left, and so phone numbers, websites, any other way that we can get information out there? If you would like to get more um, information on Bill Messiah, the website for family care specialists is ocalahealthfcs.com. If you would like to um, get information on um, more information on diabetes, um, you can call our 800 number, which is a healthcare um, information source and referral line, and that's 800 530 1188. And if you'd like to call um, Amy's office directly for our diabetes education program, it's 352 237. Two four four one. Okay, uh, Brittany, thank you as always. Uh, Amy, Mafri Amy Freeman, thank you thank for you. coming in. Nice to meet you, and Dr. Nabil Masaya, nice to meet you. I love your logo on your card, by the way. 
It's a pleasure to meet you too. <laughs> two, two, two little Egyptian guys. And <laughs> thank you, thank you. We'll, we'll be right thank back. You. This is a Fox News alert. I'm Lillian Wu. The suspect has been identified in the massacre at a black church in Charleston. Police releasing a flyer saying the subject is 21-year-old Dylan Roof of the Columbia area. Charleston Mayor Joe Riley calling the culprit. Somebody filled with hate. The gunman who killed nine people remains at large. Police putting out images from surveillance video. What we need now is to get the assistance of the community. If they see this car, if they see this individual, we do not want them to approach this person. Uh, we want them to call 911. Charleston Police Chief Greg Mullen. Parts of the Midwest bracing for another soaking and possible flooding. Rescue crews in Ardmore in south central Oklahoma say a two year old girl was swept away by floods so strong that she was ripped from her father's arms as Tropical Depression Bill passed through overnight. Fox Radio's Jeff Minasso, Fox News. We report, you decide. And now another golf confessional. 